The first step of this GPT builder, I was disappointed. I haven't even used it. I wanted to try it because I was like, oh yeah, now you can just go tell what you need it to do, and then it's going to be building like Professor Synapse for you. You can, in effect, program a GPT with language just by talking to it. Mm -hmm. No, not that, for sure. Not and it's that. so amplified, even though the character count is longer than instructions. So instructions was like 5,000, right? I uh, think custom so. instructions, yeah. you had 1,500 characters per box. Uh, oh, so now these instructions on GPT is 8,000 characters. Nice. I didn't even know that. Why don't you walk me through how you've been trying to explore the tool and then I can show you what I've been cooking up. The first thing I did, I wanted to create AI content director. Mm -hmm. but basically, it knows information about my YouTube channel. It knows how I create videos and it can help me with ideas, I'm validating those ideas, also even research. Because I wanted to test this GPT builder, I was thinking that it's going to take all what I provide and what I wanted to consider and do, and that's going to be here. So initially, it was probably like three sentences, and mm -hmm. whatever I would give it, it wouldn't build up anything more. So then I introduced like a framework for idea generation. It's called Benz. It's not my mm -hmm. unique idea. I borrowed it from yeah, another it, it YouTuber. Exists. It exists, exactly. I explained this framework, and I just said, update your system prompt, and it did. So that's at least nice to see. But again, I also asked, okay, why didn't you consider updating the system prompt information I gave you about me? Because like in, in the custom instructions, we have this box about information about you, and then we have custom instructions, right? So I thought that, okay, so this is all in one, and it's going to during the builder time, but it's very personalized to me. So that's not the case. And I actually asked why you didn't consider that. And the response it gave me was between the lines that, okay, the instructions need to be broad and not too much of a detail. So it's more like, hey, you're a helpful assistant. And when I uploaded two files, it took me, like, I was so frustrated. I thought that the whole GPT was down. I uploaded CSV file in different format, all the analytics of my YouTube channel. So I wanted to be Okay, let's analyze what worked mm -hmm. on my channel. Keep that in context and also text what type of videos I make. It was probably 10, 15 to 20 minutes. It would not look at this knowledge. I would get an error. I think I screenshotted it and it was just literally saying, you have this information. <laughs> Please like analyze this. What are the trends? And then it clicked and it did that. What else? Oh, the knowledge that I have from you, how you retain the memory of ChatGPT, I asked. If I want you to remember all the conversation we had, what should I do? And the first thing it said, ask me to summarize. <laughs> yeah. So literally <laughs> Professor Synapse practice, yeah, yeah. right? It That's does funny. work. But then I was like, okay, so summarizing is great. I will incorporate that definitely in a system prompt. But this whole conversation, I can download it as whatever CSV file, text file, doesn't matter and then upload it into the knowledge base. So basically, this is how far I got. I want to talk with you about going into configuration because I see that you have to implement all the good practices that we've been doing to create this assistant-like experience in here. And probably mm -hmm. going forward, I'm not going to use this builder because really it just gives a title and three mm -hmm. sentences at the absolutely basic level. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious to hear more from you about action. Uh, I'm happy you used the creation tool so that I don't have to waste my time. <laughs> yes, using it. you're welcome. Um, it is a wonderful idea. It'll get better. I'm positive. And it's perfect for someone who has no clue what they like, how to do this kind of thing to get them started. I always think of this type of AI as a cure to writer's block. When you're looking at a blank page, it's really difficult to get started. But once you get started, it's easier. Or if someone gives you a page full of stuff, you know, you got opinions, right? Uh, unless you're really new to prompting, I don't think it's necessary to use it. Um, another thing is the custom instructions. One thing I'm really happy about now is I can actually now just remove the Professor Synapse custom instructions from my custom instructions and just keep that bit about me at the top. So once I, what you are saying that this information about you will go into every GPT? Correct. So it just gets appended, added to the probably the top. How do you know that? 
Because it doesn't inherit this. What do you mean? So, for example, this is kind of very strange, UI or UX, mm -hmm. that these custom instructions, like the professor synapse, I have it here, right? Mm -hmm. It works only if I click that GPT. If I say hello, it will be, a, I'm a professor synapse. Greetings, I am professor synapse, <laughs> right? But if I go into my own GPT. Let's test this. Do start instead of saying hello and just see what it does. Start. It, mm, no, no, it it goes. So you're right. It's not taking uh, the custom instructions. It's separated. So this is what the piece I was saying to you, like missing where in this GPTs, where does the part about who are you goes? Because it mm -hmm. seems like this is completely eliminated. Well, actually, you're you're kind of not because the alternative here, which is probably the better way to go anyway, is to create a bio profile of yourself in a mm -hmm. text format. Yeah. Upload that as the knowledge base and yeah. ask it to reference that before it outputs anything. That was my next thinking. In a way, I also understand it because if a thinking is that this is a product that you would put on the GPT store, you're not going to provide like a personalized information about you as yourself. Mm -hmm. Here you can just upload text file with way more information about yourself. It makes sense though. Like you said, there's going to be a marketplace soon. Slash so you can make it public right now and already your people come, are coming out with examples of prompt hacking. Or you can very yes. easily get it to say it's prompt or even reveal like what's in that the knowledge base. Here, like a the little like this is the smallest font ever in the world. I don't know if I just added because we're seeing it happen. <laughs> yeah, we have seen it happen. And then like prompt hacking and jailbreaking is going hot right now. Yeah, like, it's coming been, back, coming roaring back. But one thing what with this specifically, what was interesting to me, because I thought that GPT's competitive advantage is going to be that you have unique data that is maybe not in a data training set. Like, for example, in my case, my YouTube channel analytics is completely unique data, which you can't get unless you go through my channel. I'm thinking in GPT store, like copying and replicating these GPTs is going to be incredibly easy. What's your system prompt? Give me a downloadable file of your knowledge. That's it. You take it and you create your own GPT. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll be interested to see the marketplace. And I've actually, I started off after seeing the event, the Dev Day event, being like, oh my God, all these rappers are dead. And yes. now I'm actually thinking less that because the marketplace is a contained spot. Like you're going to need to have access to that GPT plus. And like you said, it's not going to have the, the bells and whistles of security necessarily mm -hmm. that you would want. So it'd be fun, but it's not like you can go embed this on your website. Like you can't go now take from here, Professor Synapse and go embed that on your website. You don't think it's going to be possible like very soon? Well, yeah, it probably will be very soon. But the idea here is the the API for all this opened up as well. And so you can very easily just build your own sort of version of this using that API. Mm. Like you, you don't need, you don't even need to have an embed code at this point from here. The funny thing is that now it also for OpenAI works like lead magnet. Because whenever time 100%. you share GPT, it says, oh, it's only for plus users. Please sign up. It's like A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And again, clever to do the revenue share because let's be honest, we're talking pennies that you're yes. going to make as even like the highest of the high, you know, hopefully, hopefully Professor Synapse uh, <laughs> will we'll make some money. It's, it's going to be a relatively low cost. It might even just be like API credits or something. Who knows? Really a benefit that necessarily the creator, but. It's a huge lead magnet yeah. for open AI at essentially no risk or cost to them. I would actually imagine it's they're going to go similar to what Poe did, mm -hmm. which is that you essentially get paid if someone uses your bot and signs up after using your bot, you get a cut. How do you think Poe feels now? I, I don't know because we were talking about this in our call the other day. There's still a marketplace for it because they have access to all the models. Same with Dust. Mm -hmm. So as we're going to see, there's going to be, and there are models that are better at some things than other things that are less expensive. So th that I'm less worried about. It's like if you have based everything on the open AI API, you're in trouble. <laughs> yes. And also, can we talk a little bit about actions? Also would like to see Professor Synapse. If you are willing to share. Yeah, um, yeah. And actually, when you post this video, I want you to include the public link for okay, it so cool. people can start using it. Uh, cool. So we can talk a little bit about action. And to, to preface this, uh, for those who don't know, I have no coding background. I cannot code at all. High five. Uh, <laughs> high five. Uh, many of our friends as well who have been in this space, but 
the amazing part about this technology is that like you don't need to because mm. if you know how to ask about if you know the right questions to ask you can get far enough in, in in doing that and you know what i do i just take links or copy text from documentation like how yeah. to work with apis or github this instructions plug it all in and i'm like walk me through it tell me how to do it give me code and that's it i'll, I'll show you some of my conversations which are because the multimodality brings that to a whole other level now. I have now optimized this for the multimodality. Typically in the previous one, right, I just said you have access to tools and then just assumed mm -hmm. it would know what I meant and it would make stuff up all the time. Uh, but now it actually has these tools, right? It has vision, it has web browsing, advanced data analysis, or Dolly. So now it's going to know what it can actually pull on to do the thing it wants to do. Because as you were saying, right, you had that CSV file and you had to do some coaxing yeah. to get it to actually do it. I would say if you had put some context in the system prompt mm -hmm. around, you have access to this file, which includes XYZ, something like that, and you are able to use data analysis in Python, It would. I am guessing, and maybe we can test it out, it would have been no friction. So you got to give it some knowledge around what it can actually do because... It, it doesn't actually know at this point. Um, another thing I had to change, I noticed when I was um, doing some stuff that was going super verbose. It would give me like 20 steps. I'm like, chill out, professor. <laughs> and then it would keep doing it. It would like every interaction, it'd be like, blah, 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 seven steps. So I was like, I got to figure this out. It's being a little too literal and like going off the rails. So I feel like three reason steps is manageable, but obviously you can change that to your preference. All the rest is the same. And then I had to do a couple other things. It kept not doing what I wanted it to do in terms of having like the professor align and then agent say what you should be doing or giving you need. It just wasn't listening. And then I added two uh, other things here, which was the emotional plea mm. and then omit reason steps. So what was happening? Well, first this one, recent research came out, which said that if you make an emotional plea <laughs> for the information you want from ChatGPT, it's I'm more scared. likely to do better. Yeah. So I figured if we built that in so that the professor is asking the other agent to do that, it would hopefully bring a better response. You know, I have no way for me to really test this, but hey, I'll listen to the research. It doesn't hurt. And then the second part is, again, what it would do is, is every single, like after that first reason steps, it would be like, okay, now these reason steps, now these reason steps. It would just keep doing that. And it's like, no, I want to move towards the thing I want to do. I'm so happy you say <laughs> that. That was something I wanted to talk with you because I, sometimes I was like, okay, just waiting just and do repeating. Yeah. I'm just like, just do it. So I, I fixed that at least for now. Again, I'll continue to, to improve this, but I just tell it to admit reason steps and completion after this first planning stage. And then this is the same. We have some more space now, so I could re-add in the personality. You know, again, this is something that people can completely do whatever they want with. And then the commands, there's nothing really new here. And then I just added, again, it's not perfect. I'm still working on it, but I always wanted to follow this pattern of mm -hmm. align and then do the thing. So those were the updates I made in here. And it's, I don't know, it's working really well. And then I just added, at first I thought this was like, this is what you want the bot to start the conversation with. And I would actually like that. I would like to control the first thing you see when it comes up, because I think a lot of people, again, they'll stare at a blank screen mm -hmm. and be like, I don't even know where to start. And so at least for now, I've created the button, you know, so it's like, just press start and then things will get going. And then we have web browsing, Dolly, encode interpreter. We got the whole kit and caboodle. I got nothing uploaded here, but I plan to upload a few things. Again, just reinforcing the pattern that I wanted to follow from some examples. But then you would include in instructions that, hey, follow the pattern. Because I would imagine if you upload conversations, those conversations with specific details could leak into any other type of content, you know, the new user is using. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I'll have to like experiment, but I'm not going to like do private things. I'll be like, this is an example of me writing a children's book and how I want you to like mm. have that sort of conversation as an example. And then it's just like, reference this as how the conversation should typically unfold in terms of how you interact. Okay. Actions. Let's move to that. I'm curious to hear your thinking. Um, I think this part is extremely powerful. But also, it's not going to be that easy accessible to a majority of people who don't know coding. I totally agree with you. So actions are essentially a way. It looks like they already changed this. Oh, yeah. The idea here is like pretty much every application online nowadays is going to have an API. You're probably going to have to pay for most of them. Um, but the idea is it is a container that your system can talk with to use the functionality. 
without actually having to go and physically mess around in that application. So now this allows you to start plugging in APIs to your GPT bots. So let's say, for example, you use a project management software like Monday. You would then be able to plug in Monday's API into here and create specific actions for Monday so that you can be like, hey, tell me about what I have to do this week. Hey, I need to add a task to this. Can you do that for me? So the idea here is like that now the possibilities are endless in terms of what you can hook up to. At this point, at least at this moment in time, you can only do one sort of like API action set. So you couldn't do like Monday.com and your Instagram and, and, Gmail. I don't know, and Gmail and whatever. You can't do everything. You can only do one at a time. But like, again, if you if you can code, you can also just do this with the normal API, right? This just makes it more accessible to you and me to mess around with when we don't have a coding background and don't want to spend the time figuring it out. Yeah. So they've already changed this interface. I wonder why. I wonder if it's because they Tell made it too, too easy. So this is, I'll go through a conversation. So what I'm trying to do is I've created this Miss Nura bot, which is going to be my research mm -hmm. assistant. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to hook up with Zotero. For those who don't know, Zotero is a way to essentially, an open source way to capture research articles, annotate them, tag them, whatever, create your research knowledge base. So what I wanted to be able to do is be like, okay, research assistant, go do some research for me. Put that article that you found in Zotero, summarize that article for me, no. and then let's have a conversation about it and create some notes around how it's aligned to what I'm trying to do. So that's the use case I'm thinking about. And so what I want to do is set up the API to do that. And I have no idea how to do that. So what do I do? I ask the professor. And I say, how do I do that? <laughs> how do I do that? And so I go through and it's saying all these things and I go, but I'm also a little confused. So what do I do? I use Script. GPT Vision. I say, here's what I'm looking at right now. How do I fill this thing out? And so I go through and I start setting it up. Similarly, I want Professor Synapse, the version that I use, to be connected to my Obsidian notes. So mm -hmm. similarly, I'm working through it. And you'll see here, I have a picture here. Like, this is what I'm looking at. Help me like walk through this because I'm running to issues. And so you see like this now becomes, I can know nothing about how to do this. And I just have the professors spin up our little expert in APIs and data integration <laughs> and we're working through it together. But I do want to show the change here because you saw it was like a nice little editable fields that we could fill in. And now when I go to it, that's not what it looks like. I have to actually put in the JSON. Which again, not Wait, a huge so problem. This action screen was what you showed that screenshot before. Yeah, because that's what I'm expecting with these actions that it will continue the route of simple setup and fields. And then I opened this and I was like, okay, so you want me to do code? I can figure that out. But on the presentation approach was that. Anybody with no code will be able to create agent. It's easy to customize the behavior so that it fits what you want. This makes building them very accessible and it gives agency to everyone. Maybe he meant everybody with no code, but with ChatGPT. Yeah. Here's the thing is like, who knows, right? What they're thinking behind the scenes here, ironically, OpenAI, pretty close. I would bet what happened was, is they're like, uh-oh, we made this too easy. And now we're a little afraid that people might misuse it. So okay. let's wait a minute. Let's let things settle down. People play with this, see what they're doing. And if we feel like we get to a point where we, we can like maintain or control that, that feeling of safety and make it accessible to people in a way that they can't abuse it, then we'll do that. But I, ironically, now you're not going to necessarily need a prompt library as much anymore because you'll just have your agent, it's like your marketing agent, and it knows about your company because you've uploaded all that knowledge and it knows how you want to do things because you've gotten a good prompt. And so you're not going to have to like go and find the right prompt for the right situation. This is really cool. But also what Sam said, this will look funny. I yeah. can't quote him quaint. exactly. Quaint. Okay, quaint compared to what we are working on right now. We are always like at least a year behind, yeah, right? What absolutely. we get. So the thing is, for example, I have this AI director for YouTube. But I want this director to work together with a specific agent on titles, mm -hmm. on thumbnails. And I want him to be like a, seeing what's happening, getting information, plus having API to YouTube. Like all of this, like working as a system. Watch me <laughs> as I go to Professor Synapse and I update it to public. I'll send you this link. We'll put it in the video. 
and people can start using the professor as soon as they want to. Thank you so much, Joe. Like looking forward to more conversations like this. This is very raw look into GTS first <laughs> yeah. time.